Hello everybody, it's the City Mad Haven here today, and I'm going to be going over the Tiger 2's Reforge. Um, Tiger 2 has been in the game for a very long time, eight years on console. It is one of the first heavy tanks. Um, I believe the Tiger 2 was maybe the third tier 8 heavy I grinded out in the entire game, along with the IS-3 and the T-32. Uh, within the first year of the game releasing, uh, there is actually a possibility that I actually might have the uh, year one emblems for the tank. Uh, yes, I do. One year anniversary. So there we go. Um, I should actually equip these because, yeah, you, no one has them unless you've been playing since the uh, first year of the game. Um, but other than that, today I have two replays that I'm going to be bringing to you guys. And uh, first one is going to be on Prokhorovka. Prokhorovka, um, I think, is going to be a perfect map to actually show off the Tiger 2. Uh, the Tiger 2, this is one of those tanks that it is originally a support heavy more than it is a offensive heavy. But with the most recent rework, um, a lot of people have been talking about maybe this tank has been buffed a little bit too much. In my opinion, it has not been buffed too much. The only way that you need to look at that is your top plate and your turret are the only things that have been buffed on this tank. Everything else is still exactly the same. You still have your 25 millimeters underneath your track, which means that you can be shot in the side, overmatched and damaged and tracked all at the same time. That is still a flaw with these tanks, but it is not a flaw that is devastating to them. You can reverse side scrape to kind of counteract it a little bit. But Tiger 2, um, beforehand, the Tiger 2 was a little bit difficult to play. Um, I would find myself in moments that I'm struggling to be able to maneuver around the map um, with the 185 turret armor we had originally and the side of the turret being uh, 80 millimeters. Um, anyone loading heat rounds could essentially just rip right through our turret and rip right through our front armor. They still can with heat rounds with over 300 millimeters of pen or I believe it's 250. But with the Tiger 2, um, the actual base tank compared to, let's say, like the Captured King Tiger, or if we're looking at, let's say, um, the regular King Tiger, the Tech Tree King Tiger actually has better traverse speed, better handling on all terrains, and overall is honestly just a better performer by itself. Um, in the time that I have played the Tiger 2 and how much I've invested in the Tiger 2 during the first year of the game actually releasing, I can definitely say this is one of those tanks that is always going to be having a really good spot. And now that I've bought it back, I'm probably never going to be selling it because I find it to be very versatile. It is not the fastest tank on the field at 38 kilometers. And there we go, a heat round going through the front of the turret. That might have been an APCR round, just very well placed. But nonetheless, 245 turret armor is not going to be game breaking. Um, we have tanks in game that have 300 millimeters of frontal turret armor and they still have weak spots. The Tiger 2 is no exception to that. We still have a hatch, but with the top armor buff, which is actually one of my favorite buffs that was applied to this tank, originally it was 40 millimeters, which means that if you ran up against any Russian tanks, their 122s were able to overmatch your top armor on top of the roof of the turret and now with the most recent buff to this tank it is now 50 millimeters thick which is preventing all overmatching from 122 calibers and 130 calibers as well this um, top of the turret is actually able to bounce 15 centimeters so 150 millimeters but it cannot bounce 152s or 155s or bigger so overall the armor on this tank it is not broken in the slightest it's actually extremely well balanced it gives the tiger 2 that comfort zone with its top speed you have that additional heavy armor in the front and if you're able to push up and hold a position you're able to utilize your view range for your team along with that you have a very good rate of fire with decent damage at 320 per shell and some of the people were saying that they should buff it to 360 that is something i actually disagree with I enjoy the fact that the Tiger 2 and the King Tiger both have 320 alpha because of how fast it allows these tanks to fire. I would rather be able to consistently fire into an enemy's tracks, deal damage and track them and have a fast enough reload to um, reinitialize a tracking shot 
1.2 seconds after they repair. It allows you to lock down your opponents and just keep them there as long as you can. Honestly, since this is a 105, its module damage is actually not too bad either. Speaking of which, I actually need to double check the module damage while I'm staring at this. The module damage, we are looking at 150. So, yeah, it's, it's just a regular 105 module damage. Caliber of guns and module damages do not change unless for some reason it's the American M48 um, Tier 8 Undertaker tank that has uh, 200 and well, 200 module damage with high explosives. I don't know if that was a uh, error on Wargaming's end or not, but it's um, it is quite the chunky boy. But in this scenario here, um, 2,448 assisted, 2,740 uh, damage dealt. Deciding to take a little bit more of an aggressive play. I will say this, I'm sorry to spoil it in advance. This is a loss. But the fact is, because of the Tiger's armor, view range, and everything else, it allowed us to push against this flank. And with the right plays, we were able to outplay a tier 9 and a couple more tier 8s. Sorry, I have my tea. But, um... Personally, I don't think the Tiger 2 is overpowered. Um, we'll, we'll see it statistically. Cough, cough. But the way that this tank is standing up right now and everything else that it offers on the field, this is going to be a very balanced tank once time starts to slowly progress. And with the most recent buffs, people are just, you know, they're wondering why they're not going to the turret anymore. And that's why they're complaining because they're not able to pin this tank like they used to. So for me, those people... Please take your time to learn the tank, learn weak spots, because that is one thing that we all need to really focus on and learn. Rather than just loading premium all day long and firing at tanks, we need to learn weak spots. We need to make sure that whenever we're playing the game, we try to take matches a little bit slower, which in my opinion is the best way to take matches. If you're able to take them slower and slowly progress on, that is going to be making it to where you're going to have better performances more consistently because you're thinking ahead of the battle as much as you can. And speaking of thinking ahead, right here, I kind of wanted to try and get up on the hill at a D0, F0. But sadly, the Borask is already pulling up and there's also going to be a Dragon coming over on the right side as well that I was not able to uh, angle in time against. But Dragon is set on fire. So, immediately skip to the end results. Um... It, it was a good game for the Tiger. However, shout out to the uh, Borask player, Vader, for his 6,700 damage dealt instead of a Borask and Prokhorovka. Honestly, Prokhorovka is probably one of the best maps for the Borask because of how big it is combined with, you know, the Borask's concealment. Fantastic match for Vader. Well played. So, Mavarovka, this is going to be the worst possible matchmaking that we can get inside this tank because we're going to be up against tier 10s. And... The one thing that I really love about the fact of what they've done to the Tiger is they've made it to where you can go head to head against very specific tier 10s. Not every single tier 10 are you going to be able to go head to head against, but if you know the armor loadout of most of the tier 10s that you're going to be looking at, that's going to allow you to play a little bit more aggressive because you know that they have APCR premium, not heat, which you know that if you can pull around the corner at the right angle, you can auto ricochet their APCR to allow you to get a single shell in. That is probably one of the biggest advantages that the Tiger 2 is trying to teach you. It's trying to teach you to learn your enemy's ammo types and how to utilize your armor to the best of your ability. So... The Tiger 2, with the rework, you know, we've mentioned this probably like nine times now. I'm enjoying it. Overall, it's nothing but pros. It still retains its power to weight. So we're jumping into, like, my opinion of the tank now. It still retains the same power to weight. It's got a 38 top speed. Combined with that, you got 285 premium pin, 225 standard pin. 225 standard pin is enough penetration to get the job done on a lot of situations. 60 millimeters of high explosive pin as well. They are no slouch. Um, along with that, there wasn't really much reworked on this except for armor. Um, shell velocity wise, as they keep on changing the UI on me and making everything just completely go, your standard rounds are 1,100 meters per second. Your premium rounds for APCR are 1,375, and your high explosives are a really good chunky amount of 1,000 100 meters per second 
with 60 millimeters of penetration. From my experiences inside this tank as of recent, it has brought back quite a bit for me in enjoying this tank. Um, Chieftain Mark VI here, I know he doesn't have heat rounds, but I know if he can score a shot into our turret, it's nice and flat, he'll be able to pin it. But knowing that his side armor is pretty weak, I wanted to try and get a shell into there. Uh, too bad he wasn't angled in the other direction, because on the right side of the Chieftain, that is the ammo rack. Now, right here, taking it slow. You know, like, sure, I'm moving in pretty quick, but knowing what I'm able to do, I'm, I know what the amx 50 b is shooting, so I don't mind being a little bit of aggressive here. Along with that, Blades off to my left left side. He's being just as aggressive. Um, I played both these matches in the same play session with Blade, and uh, Blade honestly has fallen in love with the King Tiger as of right now, by the way it fills. Um, along with that, I also bought Blade, I would say, I believe it was this morning. I bought Blade the uh, Basante C45, and I had him play a few matches in it. I told him he had to play matches in it. And by his third game, he straight up said that he would have never bought this himself if he knew how bad it was. So, uh, later in the, you know, later down the road, I'm kind of hoping that the Italians do get a massive rework because they do definitely need a rework um if if blade's saying they're bad tanks they're they're bad tanks i've been saying it for a minute but if blade's saying it then yes they are not performing that good so right here i'm trying to tell blade you know you're gonna want to be taking it slow and artillery hits blade for a very chunky amount So, E75, um, if you guys want me to play the E75 and you want to see some replays in the E75 for my next video, uh, let me know down in the comments section for that. I will take the time out to make sure that I get those out to be able to show you guys the E75 and how it's performing with just its very small improvement from 252 in the turret armor to 265 and how I feel about that. Which, it may not be the biggest change, but it is actually a very dramatic change, especially knowing that... A slight change in armor, I think the best example is the E4, with its 50mm buff. It's not going to make the E75, you know, win all, break all. Uh, we're going to move this body right here out of the way and to get some shots underneath this barrel. If you guys want to, rewind a tad bit, take another look at that shell that I put inside the E75 frontally. Those lobes on the E75 are considered weak spots, they are overmatch points, and they are very simple to go through. So, I do recommend to, uh, learn those weak spots since the turret has been buffed but as of right now tiger 2 this is probably the best state the tiger 2 has ever been in in a very long time and it makes me extremely happy to see that so 2774 damage along with 770 assists 400 blocked not a whole lot blocked because we took the inside rather than the outside like blade but blade was getting absolutely lit up on the inside now Tiger 2, fantastic vehicle. Let's go over my equipment and my perks inside this tank as I'm just being a Muppet as of right now. Advanced optics, advanced loader, and improved ventilation is what I'm running on this. Turns out I opened two tabs for that. I'm just a Muppet right now. Okay. Uh, going over to the commander. Um, I've had this guy basically since year one as well. Uh, he was originally on the Panzer 5.4 when we first bought the Panzer 5.4. He looks like he does not want to be here. He is just sick of his job. We have rapid aim to increase turret rotation. I use this crew for the E100 and the mouse as well. Uh, turret rotation is a massive advantage for a lot of tanks. Six sense, rapid loading, off-road driving, clutch braking, born leader, situational awareness, track mechanic, and controlled impact because you are a German heavy. If you can hit somebody hard enough, it's gonna hurt. So... I, I don't think this buff was a bad buff in the slightest. So if we go back to an older update, we're going to go way far back, which we have the 185. We have the 100 millimeter side armor on both sides, the 80 millimeters here. So we must have hit one of the panels, 80 millimeters with this tank head on. And then we compare it to, let's say, um, a tier 10, 113, because they have heat rounds and we load the heat rounds essentially the entire front of the tank is now weak the only thing this buff has really applied to this tank is allowing it to be able to stop 
and actually be able to ricochet off the sides of the turret, which originally was supposed to be a buff over on the E50 and E50M, but they still left those as 80 millimeters, so those still are considered weak spots from the front. So entirely, this is really the only thing this buff has affected other than the fact that it has made it a little bit thicker for whenever it's top tier, it's not gonna be underperforming. It's going to be doing a lot more things going over. And I did pull this up. I don't know why I pulled this section up. I kind of wanted to look at the base statistic values, but I have nothing from the past to compare it to. So, you, you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm not worried about it. But overall, um, fantastic tank. This is definitely going to be a keeper inside my garage, and I'm probably never going to get rid of it. Uh, why is that green? Six rounds a minute. I have never seen a green number on this before. Uh, okay. It's green. Probably going to report that. That's that's weird. Well, you guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the time that I decided to take out today. Um, the play session that I did put inside the Tiger 2 was not a bad play session. I really did enjoy the tank. Um, I would actually recommend for people to actually grind this out. Uh, there are some people who are using the 88mm on this right now, which... I actually don't recommend because we don't have the Panther 288 on it. I recommend just taking the 105, using that one over the 88. Um, just because you get better DPM with the 88 doesn't mean it's going to be better overall. Once you once you end up against 9s and 10s, that 88 starts to suffer tremendously with its 244 premium pin. So the 105 is probably going to be your best bet for this. Um, I am carrying a little bit more premium ammunition on this with um, 14 standard rounds, 25 premium rounds. And that's just because we're on console. We end up against 10s quite a bit. And also because I have a premium account. I have a lot of silver built up. A lot of gold built up. And also, um, everyone in chat that is Xbox, I'm so sorry, PlayStation. Basante right now is in the store. If you guys want to, drop down your gamer tags. I'm going to be going through and choosing one random person to give the uh, Basante C45 to. Keep in mind, the tank is horrible. But the fact is, I'm going to give away anyways, because who knows, later in the future, once the tank is buffed, you're going to have access to it and be able to enjoy it. Other than that, you guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and remember, my brain is big and it is smooth. And right now, it is super smooth. Also, the wind is blowing like crazy outside. I've heard a couple of crashes. I got to go check out a few things. Other than that, you guys have a great day. See you on the battlefield.